Hi, welcome to class. We're the only two right now, but the other ones will show up eventually, right? Hmm. I hate my life. I hate my life. Hey, Professor Sunrise Productions! Hello, class. Professor Sunrise here. In today's class, we're taking a look at what could closely resemble a combo tutorial for Dragon Link. Uh, first of all, I'm not really a huge fan of combo tutorials because while they can be quite nice to get to know a deck, like from a first basis, like the very first thing you do, after you've seen a decklist, maybe take a look at a combo tutorial. But because Dragon Link is not really that linear and it's pretty much a non-linear combo deck, um, I don't think it really makes sense. So what we will be instead doing is you will be seeing me doing a lot of test hands, speed up depending on how much I need to record this. And you can just see how I play out um, different hands. And I will be going over my thought process when I have like a very generic hand. So we'll be going over my order of priority, what I want to end on, how to play around certain hand traps, the 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 role of certain cards in my hand, for example, small worlds will be very a decent part of this video. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. Hope you guys can learn something from it. If you have any questions about how I combo, how I combat uh, certain stuff, definitely let me know in the comment section below. And without further ado, don't forget to like and subscribe, leave some feedback down below and let's get right into the video. So this will be the list which we are talking about just so that you guys have all the information which you need. And of course, like I said earlier, Dragon Link is a very non-linear deck. Uh, you will always be having to think on the fly. And for that, I will give you just my order of things, what I want to end on and what I put my most priority on. First of all, of course, it's going to be Seal. Seal is the boss monster of the deck. Basically, it's the corner point of any end board just because it's a very strong mixture of res uh, of versatility, disruption, follow-up. It's basically a threatening role as well because most of the times it will be dealt with by battle phase and if it does so, um, it's very easy to just uh, get a magnet on the board with it, get the follow-up, you will survive the turn because the opponent already used the battle phase and then you just have a lot of follow-up in the next turn to overwhelm your opponent. Afterwards, we will always be trying to resolve a magnet in our own first turn and to get Branded Beast on the board. Branded Beast is just the best disruption the deck has to offer. It's a super strong meta call right now. It is super versatile in being a trap, so it dodges most of the hate which common decks run against you. Um, it does get a little worth with Ogre being in the format now, but it's not the end of the world, honestly. Um, and resolving Magnum in your own turn is just very important to keep your card economy going, because the first turn can be a little high on investment, depending on what you go for. Uh, so just getting that magnum resolved is, in my opinion, key. And then third thing is what we want to get alive is the rocket engine. Um, having access into an Omni Negate is quite good, and it does give you the most uh, disruption for you, the resources you put into. Sadly, you do have to put a lot of resources into just because you most of the time will be normal summoning a safer, so you have to go with Ravine, a discard, plus the boot sector. It does use quite a lot, but it's honestly worth it. This also gives us access into this Pata line. And if we already have a seal and a Magnamut resolved, and we have a way to get into the Branded Beast, you want to take a look at if you can go for a Disparta line. For that, you will be needing, of course, the Rocket Engine Axis, and you will be needing a Biss Seal. But most importantly, you will also be needing another Biss Seal or a high-level Dragon. Uh, most of the time, it will be Levy or a Biss Seal to go attribute that off for the Rebellion after you've went for Savage plus Disparta, ending on the end part of Seal, Savage, Disparta, Levy Hand Trip, or just another Biss Seal plus Branded Beast and sometimes even Branded Regain. This is very strong. And the fifth uh, thing we want to go for, of course, is the Levy Hand Trip. You don't have to go for the whole Disparta thing to go for the Levy Hand Trip. Sometimes you will just do it uh, with, without Disparta. And one little extra note, if you have no access into Bistials whatsoever, because maybe you got Hand Tripped on the one Lubellion you had, and it, you, you have no way of getting into another Bistial, and Seal is not really that strong in that format, uh, in that matchup, most of, the, most of the time I would do that against Cash Tira or maybe like in a mirror or something. You can just turbo out a Burrow Ant and protect it with a Savage, and then you have Burrow and Savage with best, next to no follow-up, but sometimes you're just forced to go for that line. Just be in mind that sometimes Seal Pass is not enough. Uh, most of the time it will be against Kashtira, and Burrow Land is a very strong meta call. If you get eat like one or two hand traps and you can still end on that, it's really strong because most of the time there's just no out for Burrow Land apart from non-engine. And if they've already uh, thrown two non-engine at you and then have another one, like an Imperium, a Ruler or something, they just are better than you, I guess, and you just lose that match. Probably anyways, no matter what you would have done. 
Next, the most important thing you want to be doing in this format is playing around Droll. Droll was uh, before Cyber Access Storm released was already basically in every main deck or side deck at least. Now it's going to be in every main deck because it's really good against Kashira still. It's insanely good against Super Heavy Samurai. Against Proly, it's kind of like against Runic where it's decent, but sometimes it can be a little lackluster, but sometimes it can also just be an auto win. Uh, so Droll is going to be insane and it's also solid against us. It's definitely not a neck breaker just because Seal Pass is just so much stronger than it was back then when Dragon Link was popular. Uh, but you still have to play around it accordingly. Of course, if you have a Gamma in hand and you, you can just use all of your hand effects like Rebellion, Chaos Space or Safer, everything which clears the board, you can just use that freely and check for a Gamma. You can also go for like a Rebellion, um, use its effect and if your opponent <clears throat> doesn't think at all on res or on the uh, active uh, effect of rebellion you can consider using chaos base to pitch the gamma you just have to read your opponent there online it's of course it's harder to do so but in real life you can just read your opponent because if they don't think at all they probably don't have droll in there and then if you have no gamma so you have no protection for your search effects it's probably best to always start with a rebellion just because like going for a chaos base or a safe it just doesn't really cut it especially chaos base going minus one to go for a monster which can't use its search effect and you cannot even use the chaos space effect it's just too hard to to minus afterwards so we try to go for a rebellion or a safer because safer at least still gives you one body so you just traded this uh drill with one body basically so that's fine if you have a lot of bestials already you can go for different stuff for example if you have a hard run ravine you can go for that if you just want to go for like a strike at dragon search boot sector because we have like two bestials plus rebellion we can also go for that just because then we have that out of our deck and we can play in the next turn um overall but i would say it's most of the time it's rebellion unless you have like already two bestials plus a rebellion then you can uh, skip that but then even then most of the time it will still just be the rebellion Importantly, Magna can be resolved on a draw, so banish your monsters accordingly there so that you can get the most value of the Magna mode. Most of the time you will be wanting to add back like a random bestial or like a safer or a tracer just so that you have the best place next um, turn to uh, completely overwhelm your opponent. And then lastly, against Droll, prepare your side deck, have some counters against Droll, either be it like a, a Cult by the Grave or just some floodgates of your own. I really like in Skill Drain right now, it's a really solid card into the meta. And a lot of decks just struggle against it, especially stuff like Super Heavy Samurai, which struggles to play back her removal in general. Having Branded Beast and uh, Skill Drain against them is really solid. The next thing which I want to talk about is Small World. First of all, I'm not 100% sold on Small World yet, but I really liked it in the 60 card variant. There where it was mandatory in my opinion. In 45 cards, which I'm currently at, you can definitely cut it plus the Nocto Vision and then maybe one other random card and we are down to 40 cards. The thing is, I really like it that it just slightly highest my deck count while giving me more access into all of the really strong cards being safer, Lupelian, Kaijus and Gamma. So it's a really good meta call right now in my opinion so I'll still be sticking to it but you can freely just cut it and play 40. Um, most of the time we will be using it to search a safer or Lupelian of course these are the best cards and these are what our bridges are there for. Uh, you can also use it to search a white or a black dragon if chaos space or safer gets ashed. This is very important or very crucial going second if you don't have the option to go for like a gamma search or like a kaiju because the situation doesn't ask for it and you get hit on a, with an ash or like something else on the chaos base you can then just search a white or black dragon and continue comboing off going second that's very important because this is basically another line which lets you play if your normal summon gets stopped which is very important for bestials of course especially in matchups where there's no lights and darks in the opponent's graveyard you can also research droll or other auto win hand trips later on in the combo you just gotta know your bridges so if you have a small bird in the opener and you have a lot of gas already, don't be discouraged. Small bird can either be a ravine discard uh, in a pinch or you can use it later on if you have like chaos space um, plus access into the chaos dragons and you can get one of them back later on. It's very easy to use one of them, especially the white dragon I think. It's very easy to bridge into stuff like Droll, Ash, Nibiru if you play it, um, stuff like that is very easily accessible and it's very strong because... Your end board plus an auto win blowout hand trap like Droll or Nib is an auto win against everything just because we have so much follow up even through a Droll. And then lastly, which is something you will have to get used to and you have to evaluate depending on the matchup, depending on your hand, etc, etc. Avoid using high impact hand traps like Droll as the first card for small world bridges. So if you have Droll plus small world in your hand and your hand is like kind of looking mediocre, 
really consider if you cannot just use like maybe that Druze Worm or like that Magnemite even. You go for that Small World because Droll is everywhere right now. And if you use Small World and you get Drolled on it, it doesn't really do a lot. And then you don't even have that your own Droll to counteract the opponent's Droll on yours. So it's you have to evaluate those. But just keep in mind, it's not always the right correct uh, choice to use your random hand traps for your Small World bridges. And then lastly, let's get over some cute tips and tricks I figured out with the decks over the time. Ogre is getting really popular right now, uh, so chain block your Romulus and be careful with your field spells. They open up, especially Ravine with the discard, opens it up for some huge Ogre value for the opponent, so you just have to play around accordingly. It's going to be sometimes very hard to decide if you want to search a Lebellion or a White Dragon with Chaos Space. My rule of thumb is that if we have ways to get two dragons on board so we can make a seal, I'd much rather search a Lubellion because if you take a look at the chart of importance, you know that we just want to have seal Lubellion and White Dragon or Chaos Base can either give us into seal or Lubellion. And if you of course have a way into seal already, we will just be searching the Lubellion. Um, but if we have two dragons and a random bestial for example, uh, we can just use those two dragons to go into a ravine and then send the rebellion into the graveyard with a ravine and then we can use for example at best case the magnet of course to still get full combo uh, just do a shit ton of test hands and you will know what you want to go for in most of the hands of course you'll have to consider hand traps drill etc etc but this is just my rule of thumb what i want to go for in standard combos you banish safer from the graveyard for example if you use it to search a black dragon, but you don't always want to go for that. Especially if you have a trace in hand, you can try to use safer to pitch the tracer to search the white dragon, <clears throat> giving you a way better end board in the end, just because you have access into levy hand trip. Because then your ravine can send a levy and you still have a safer in graveyard. Now with this part, of course, this can change because then the uh, the, the tracer package or the rocket engine can give you back the safer into the graveyard if you pitch that, but this will just come natural once you learn all of the combo lines. But in general, be careful of when to use safer to clear the field and when to use it from something from the hand. Of course, having a gamma in there will change things up. Then you will definitely want to use it to empty your field just to bait a droll, an ash, etc. Lastly, time your draw and search effects the way you need it. If you have the option to get more of your engines, for example, you're lacking the rockets and the levy engine, uh, maybe use your draw effect of Noctovision Chaos Space Regained first to see what you get. Maybe you top like a... Uh, uh, Epsa Router to discard for the Ravine to send a Levy, maybe you search a Rocket, uh, maybe you search a Levy, and then you use your searches, your Ravine sends, just so that you can get most out of your engine out. If your game plan is already laid out and you don't really want to overcommit because you're playing against Runic, you don't even want to really commit, you just want to seal, regain pass or something, uh, then definitely use your draws later on, get your searches out, and then use the draws just so that you don't draw into multiples that you may be drawn to a droll, into an ash, etc., just so that you get more value out of your deck. And that's basically it for all of my tips and tricks with the deck. Um, of course, this is by no definition a combo guide, just because I don't think combo guides really make sense with Dragon Links. I th hope that the combos I did in the background could maybe help you get a little bit out of knowledge and then having all of these things laid out to you will probably get you in even more knowledge hopefully. If you have any questions definitely leave them in the comment section below. I will definitely answer them and for now class is dismissed. You guys are free to leave. Professor Sunrise out. P -p -p Peace.